long for all my life. And uh, I knew there was something that, that I'd, f I'd felt as a, a little boy. I, I didn't know what it was that I felt that, but I knew I had to get to it. And uh, I, I do know that I found it there. And that was the kingdom of God in operation. It, and uh, uh, I, just wanted, I just felt like I needed to be thankful. Oh, yes. I was thankful in my heart, and I just need, I felt like I needed to express it. You know? So thankful for and, that, Robert. Uh, I'm thankful that, uh, that uh, I found the, the longing in my heart, and uh, I just want to praise Jesus. Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. What he did for you in Israel was a marvel. Yes. Oh, what he did for you in Israel right. last October was a great gift because he's always been timid and shy and backward. Yes. And the Lord has helped him. Well, I couldn't talk like this today. No, you couldn't God talk like this. God hadn't helped me, That's right. you know, and know. Uh, in Israel. And, of course, I, I, I've known since then that I can fall back. I mean, I need to keep, as Reverend Hoax, uh, one of his brothers, I don't know which one it was, but because uh, I don't know them, but uh, uh, told me in Israel, he said, no, Proclaim it. Don't forget to proclaim it. Keep proclaiming it because right. that's how you'll keep it. Yes. And, uh, right. and uh, I want to proclaim it and uh, be thankful. Be grateful. How God has helped because, uh, uh, well, I just don't, it was like from darkness to light. When, when I found the, uh, the waiting upon God, it seemed like the, those means were just for me. So and, uh, uh, of course, I know that it's for other people too, but it just seemed like it was just for me. Yes. And how, how God led you in maybe the second or third service I was in on the simple uh, the way to uh, walk with God, how to be led of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I got the tapes after that and how God uh, helped me. And um, I'm not proclaiming that I know anything, but... Uh, I just, it just it helped me sh show me the way. Praise and the I Lord. just want to be thankful and praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, we want to thank thee, Jesus, for this wonderful help and gift to Roderick Abraham because he was raised by some of the most wonderful praying parents. And God wonderfully worked in their families' lives back when we found them now almost about 50 years ago. So when we found his father and mother. That was before he was born. And how Jesus changed and his life and encouraged him and lifted him up. We want to praise the Lord because it is a gift of God for these wonderful experiences to be had and to be possessed from the Lord Jesus by the grace of God. We want to praise him. Give him thanksgiving. Thank you. All right, uh, Jason, would you like to witness? You know how the Lord helped you to witness the other night. It was so precious. I'm thankful. I, after I got up, I just felt so much better. I felt good all week, all the rest of the week. I was sitting there this morning, and I thought, boy, I'm going to have to stand up, because all the time you were talking, there was just a little little working in there for about a half hour. And then it left, and I thought, oh, no. And I, so I wanted to be stand up and be thankful for it. And yeah, thankful how it's been encouraging. Since you've been back, and I was telling Tommy, uh, yesterday we were working, and I, I said, I've never seen Brother Helm so excited. I've never seen you so ex as excited as you are every service every service and you were talking about how you how when you find something you have to endure to get it well the other night when we were at your house you wanted to find Edward and it was a, it was a beautiful illustration to me you didn't give up you called everybody you knew to call that even knew Edward and it was and you just kept calling and kept calling and kept calling and the operator said no we can't get through well you kept calling and kept calling so and we got through the one time so it's just a good illustration to me it to is. not give up. It's yeah, keep that's right, to keep right on going. <clears throat> that's good. Good observation. So just keep persevering until what he leads you are in and have and share and give. Because the more you give out what he's given you, the more returns to you. If you keep, see, many people have lost this victory because they didn't give it out. They kept it. They held it. But by giving it away, it comes back multiplied. That's an obedience. That's an obedience. See, like up here, I was in the home church there for 59 years off and on since I started to attend there. It was prayer meeting. They were singing, oh, where the healing waters flow. 
So I said to them when they finished it, I said, there was a person here healed while we sang that. And not anyone said a word. Not anyone responded. Five or six weeks later, one of the most wonderful Christian women in the church told my wife that she was healed right then when we were singing that, but she said, something told me not to tell it. To hold it to my heart. Now, if she would have shared that, what do you suppose that would have done for everyone? Because the people went out and said, well, Lawrence said someone is healed, but he was mistaken. He didn't know what he's talking about. Or he had the wrong revelation. If she would have just shared it, you know, and told how Jesus healed her, it would have encouraged everyone in that prayer meeting. Wouldn't it? It would have helped someone else. They could have been lifted or healed or strengthened or blessed. But she said to Florence, she said, you know, I thought about sharing it, but something told me not to do it. So the flesh holds us back from what is ours. The devil and the flesh holds us back and we hold what we have instead of giving it and sharing it in humility with thanksgiving. And in keeping it, it's loss, but in sharing it, it's gain. Everyone gets in on it. That's willing to hear in their heart. Not in their head, but in their heart is to let him lead and direct and guide you and direct you. You see, this is teaching about something special. And that's to get what is ours. Is to have and receive what is yours. And so to receive what is yours is to believe and have faith and be thankful and share it and give it away. And then it comes back, maybe twofold or more, as you share out of your heart and give God the glory. See, when Scott got up, that's what he did. Yes. He began to share, and then we all got in on it. Yes. And before he was through, he felt like he had more rest here in the hour and 15, 16 minutes than he'd had the previous days of endeavoring to rest in wonderful places and wonderful things, seeing and enjoying but it's all because of the Holy Spirit. All because of Jesus' direction as each one was minding what the Lord would have them to do or say or pray or witness. And this is encouraging. Yes, Janice, so thankful for this precious daughter. I have to share how Jesus helped me this week, and I trust this is all right. The time to oh, share. Oh, yes. Well, thank you. Um, Certain things have been kind of pressing on, in on me, and I've been thinking about a lot of things and, and trusting about a lot of things. But uh, this week I had some questions, and I asked my sister that's visiting here, Linda, a few things. And we talked about a few things. And then we just went on, and, and I trusted the Lord. And uh, Oliver was able to come over Tuesday evening and have catfish with us. And it was such a sweet time. Yes. It was so precious. And I didn't ask him any questions. I had questions I'd like to ask him, too, but I, I didn't do it. But anyway, in his sharing, he answered one of my questions. And it was so it's sweet. So it was so sweet that God would do it that way. Yes. Because I didn't have to press him. I didn't have to put anything on him he doesn't even know know about it I didn't share it with him but it was just something between me and Jesus and Jesus took care of it when this one up here was sharing how Jesus would help us it, it wasn't that I was terribly desperate or at the end of my rope but just something that helped me that encouraged me to be able to deal with some things to put them behind me now and leave them there and let God take care of them and another thing that Jesus has shown me this week is in prayer, um, instead of reviewing things that have been difficult or even people in difficult situations, even in prayer, to kind of just put it in a lump and say, Jesus, here's all these things, here's all these cares, and not review each one individually. Because when I do that, it drags me down and it kind of puts me into that uh, care or that situation so I'm thankful for that and the Lord's help but I'm just greatly encouraged that he loved me enough that he would send a man of God to answer my question 
and to help me in this way. And yes. I want to praise the Lord for this service this morning. It's been so uplifting and so sweet and so wonderful. When this dear one up here was praying, oh, it was such a help. Oh, my, it was wonderful. It was great. <laughs> it just brought joy oh. to my heart. Oh, anyone who got and, in on oh, that yes, was one yes. of the great prayer meetings. Oh, it, it was wonderful. Oh, it was about 20 after 9. It was so great. Or yes. 9.30, it was so great. <laughs> That came out of guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yes, so I'm thankful how the Lord's helping them and how he's helping in Florida. It's, it's wonderful. It's precious. It's a great story. It is. I'm sure if we knew all the stories of everybody here, it would just be wonderful. It's but a fact. thankful how God can lead and help to be shared what needs to be shared for those that are in the presence, in the service, or, yes. or with the dear one or whatever. How he can do it if we don't get too apprehensive and try to push him and try to yes. to make it happen but let yes. god do it and, yes. and lean on him yes so praise the lord I'm oh thankful that's so today. good that's so good janice we praise the lord for that testimony how the lord answered her question gave her help praise the lord Jeannie, would you sing now number two on your list uh there's something else on someone's heart let's don't miss it yes liza Thank Jesus for healing me in Israel. Thank him for helping me to know to go yes. at all because when Doug wasn't supposed to go, I thought I wasn't supposed to go and God said I was and he healed me. Yes. I'm thankful for that and I, I want to thank him. Yesterday he helped me in a situation that um, I hope it changes my life. We went to the park with several children and I was playing with them, and I thought, now you just need to really play with them because they want you to play. And so I climbed up on the monkey bars, and I climbed up there, and I thought, boy, I haven't been up here for a long time. And the little girl, my little niece, said, well, let's jump off. I said, you think we could? She, she jumped off. And I started to jump off, and Jesus told me not to. But I didn't listen because I thought I was being a baby. I thought I was just, you know, you're too old, and you're just, you just need to jump off of here. And he said again, don't jump off. But I jumped off anyway. And my ring caught on a bolt and ripped into my finger. I thought when I looked at it, it was going to be gone. And the minute I hit the ground, I said, oh, Jesus, please never help, help me never miss another word you tell me. Yeah, help me never forget that you're trying to help us every step. And I just thought, Jesus, help me. You know, I, hurting your finger is not a big deal. But if you miss Aline, see, we'd miss Georgine. We'd miss all of you. If Pastor Emery had missed a leading mother wouldn't have got there and we'd have never been here. True. So each, each leading is so important. To see, if he can't trust me to not jump off the monkey bar, he can't trust me to help a soul. And so I'm just crying out that Jesus will help me to obey every time he speaks to me, every time he talks to me, that I'll be in such tune that I'll recognize his voice, that, yes. that these kind of meetings can go on because we try to obey every, everything he wants us to do. That's so I so just important. praise him today. It's so important to obey the Holy Spirit and to do as Jesus leads and, and guides and reveals. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, Sister Blake. Helm, I need to ask you and everyone to forgive me because as you started to pray for healing, uh, the thought just came in my mind. You can claim the healing for your shoulder because it's been almost two years I hurt my shoulder, the rotocuff, and it's given me great pain. And so I want to ask you to forgive me, and I'm claiming that. By God's Praise grace. the Lord. We're grateful. Indeed. Everyone be obedient to the Holy Spirit. We're thankful for that. Yes, Jonathan. I'm thankful for Jesus' help. Ever since Georgine stood up for the first time, it's been like God's just been sprinkling warm oil over my heart. It's an unusual sensation. It's never happened before. I was thankful for that, that God could you know, work with me. But it's something when you were sharing just a couple minutes ago reminded me over this last week, some Sunday and Thursday, I put $4 into the offering plate just yes. out of $5 that I had, and God sent that back 10 times. Yes. Tenfold in a love offering or love gift to, to me. I didn't expect it. I didn't, you know, I was just putting it in because I felt, well, I'll just put these two dollars in. I'll just put these two dollars in. And I put four dollars in the offering. 
and God sent it back ten times. And so that's just, I'm, it just shows what you were so saying. So grateful right there. for the Lord to bless like that. Hallelujah. I was dictating a letter to Christopher Gregory, Donna June's precious son, who was out in a camp in New York, I believe it is. And we were trying to encourage him. And I said, Kathleen, I, I want to send something to him because when I was young like that, I worked all week for one dollar. Milking cows in the morning, milking cows in the evening, and distributing oil and gasoline in the parts of three counties to the edge of Ohio. I worked all week for one dollar when I was his age and younger. So I said to her, I want to send him a little something. And I... I wanted to send him 10 or 15 or 20 dollars because I knew that may mean something to him. He may need it. But I said, Kathleen, I can't send any of the, those numbers. When I pray, the Holy Spirit tells me to send him 14 dollars. Holy Spirit witnessed in my heart on 14 dollars. So when he got the letter, his mother came in to Robert Allen's beauty salon on Wednesday. She was happy and excited, and of course that excited Robert Allen. And she said when her son received the letter, he was very appreciative of it. But when he counted up what he owed, it was $14. It's true. And I want to thank God again that you are so timed in everything because my heart has been pounding. And I thought, oh, Jesus, I don't want to respond when I'm not supposed to help. And then you would talk about my son so I could have a chance to just praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I would just had it on my heart to say that when God works with you, that when the Holy Spirit is in presence, it's worth the world. It's, it's, it's as if it's what you were born for. It's wonderful. And I'm so glad he helped me not to miss it. It's worth giving up everything for, and I know that he is the one. Jesus. I'm so thankful that you found me, and i just thankful that I can praise him and acknowledge God this morning. Praise the Lord, Donna June. Why aren't we thankful to the Lord in heaven? We're always helped her and her family, because her father, a Methodist preacher, was one of my close friends in 1941. We had wonderful fellowship together, and I preached for him years later. And now he's in glory. He's in heaven. But his ministry is going on in his children and his grandchild. It, what God begins never ends. And we praise him for this guidance, and I think... It's so wonderful that the Lord laid upon my heart two weeks ago to ask you to write him a, a letter of appreciation, of encouragement, of help. And then when I'm dictating to our secretary, the Lord said, you put the $14 check in, not 15 or not 12, but 14, and it's the very number he needed to pay what he owed. It's like when God had me to, to write Naomi, a few weeks ago, we reviewed this last Sunday, you know, and he told me to write her and encourage her. And I said, Kathleen, I want to send this daughter something out of what a little I've got in my account. I want to send her 10 or 20 dollars, and she thought I said 30 or 40, which I didn't know I said, and I could have said it, of course did. But I couldn't send her. The Lord witnessed in my heart to send her 8 dollars. I said, Kathleen, that's unusual <laughs> to send somebody $8 because I was 900 miles away from her and 1,200 miles from my secretary. And here she had put in an offering back so many weeks before that. She told her girlfriend, she says, I'm going to put in all of my $8 that I have in the offering. And see what God's going to do with it. So when she got home, why Betty, like a second mother to her, looked after her since she was born to this precious daughter. That's great help to Barbara and Oliver. She said, now you need your money you've given. Oh, she said, I'm not going to have any of it. And she tried to give her money again. She said, I'm not going to have it. That week, the next week, the next week, 
But he would try to give her money. She said, I'm not going to have it. I'm going to see what God's going to do with my eight dollars. So many days, the Lord reveals to send this child eight dollars. Now, what did that do for her faith? That have someone at Tom England's too. That eight dollars. Oh yeah. I, I, I don't remember the the specifics, but but that also was one of the things that really helped somebody. Stirred some people up. Well, that was encouraging. I thought that was wonderful. It, what, it yes, is. It is. It's wonderful. Yes. Because that eight dollars he told me to have her write the check out for was worth more than a thousand dollars. Because if I said a hundred or more, you see, it wasn't that eight dollars. Because she wanted to see what God was going to do with her eight dollars, so he said, "I'll just give it back to you." That's what happened. We want to praise Jesus for saving our soul and for guiding and sanctifying and for healing and answering prayer and guidance. Revelation. I just want to be thankful. I received that letter um, in school because I was in the middle of one of my classes and they brought it to me. And um, I was thankful that it was great timing because I was able to share it with my friends and everything. And they were really, I mean, you know, they don't go to my church or anything, but um, they were really excited because we, I couldn't figure out at first why it was $8, but it was really neat because we, it was just really strange. And, well, Debbie McBride finally, you know, remembered that that was what it was. But I was just really glad I got to share it with my friends. And they were like, <laughs> one of the girls just kind of looked at the check and just kind of gave it back. She was really surprised. <laughs> yes, because she knew that you had given your offering and God sent it back to you to the dollar. Hallelujah. So Jesus answers prayer. God answers prayers. By God's grace, we can pray and have faith and believe and follow. Praise the Lord. We want to thank Him for His guidance and direction. All right, Jeannie, would you come, please? When we found her, as I said the other night, she was unhappy and despair. And uh, she'd been in the church, and uh, I don't know how many years she'd been in the church. Her father was a choir director for, I think, 40 years. When I found it. And for God to work in this daughter and change her life. Yes. Change her life. Still changing. Still changing it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. We're thankful. Amen. Happy, happy, happy. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. We're indebted to Jesus for it. <laughs>
time goes by and no one bothers, heaven feels the pain. Looking down, God sees each heartache, knows each sorrow. David talking while God has blessed David so while she was singing he could hardly hold his cup ran over and he's a quiet man turn around so you can see your face oh, I, I praise the Lord <laughs> I tell you brother Ham, how God's led you today oh I tell you Kathy and I have been on vacation for three weeks I feel like Scott I didn't get much rest till this morning. <laughs> but oh, how God's led here today. Oh, it helps my heart. Oh, to sense His presence worth everything in the world. Yes. And to see in this beautiful song everything that's happened here this morning. Yes, what's happened here everything, this morning? Everything. That song. Yes, I saw these beautiful young women over here. Right you, you, you'd spoken about them, they'd shared. It was all in that song. Heaven's right eyes. there. Heaven's, Heaven's eyes. eyes looked down. Heaven's eyes saw them where they were. Heaven's eyes met their need. Oh, I praise the Lord. I thank them this morning. We, we wanted to come this morning, Brother Ham. Well, you surprised me. Well, we wanted to. Well, I'm so glad. <laughs> we wanted to. My, my. We, we were homesick for you and for our pastor. So thankful. And maybe our only opportunity to get to be with you. That's right. But uh, oh, we go back to work tomorrow, but we're here today and yeah. rejoicing. Oh, and it's, it's like heaven to be here with you today. Oh, I tell you that. It's like heaven because God's here. Because God's working. It feeds my soul. And I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's the associate pastor with Reverend Oliver Hogue back home. He's on his staff. One of his faithful men. And, uh, oh, I tell you one night, <clears throat> I said, if you'll just cry out for God to sanctify you. And he cried out so loud that night. There was about three or four hundred there with us or more. And the cry of his heart was to be cleansed of the carnal nature and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was a marvel what God did and how he's been working with him. And through, he's been to a theological seminary and God has blessed him in preaching. 
And God's done a wonderful work. And here, the Lord, after three weeks of vacation, Kathy, you've been writing us regular in all every few days for months. And here, God would bring them down here, 260, 70 miles, one way to be with us, and feed his heart and give him more rest today than he's had in his three weeks. By far. Even if it's equal, it would have been great. All because of the Holy Spirit. All because of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. We've been seated here for about two hours. We haven't stood up for nearly two hours. Not quite. And uh, McAdams sisters, would you see number four on your list? Get ready and let's all stand, please. Lead us to Brother Roger. Well, this is like heaven to me. Yeah, this is like heaven to me. I'm crossed over Jordan to Canaan's land. And this is like heaven to me. Oh, this is like heaven to me. Sing it again. another song on your heart yes, that you'd sir. like to sing. Amen. Thank you, John. Sunshine, sunshine in my soul today. Sunshine, sunshine all along the way. Yes. Since my Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love with Praise the Lord. Oh, that was good. Is there another song on your heart? Great songs. Thank you, Somebody said we haven't had much singing. Well, we had a little then. <laughs> that was on your heart. That's been on my heart since Scott. And I kept saying, "Oh, should we sing it? Should we sing it?" And it was just almost like this one, right? I thought, "Oh, there, God is so great." God. That was on Marilyn's heart. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Does everyone be obedient to the Holy Spirit? Amen. Yes, Betty. When we found her, she was lonely. Graduate of a Bible college. She'd go to the altar to they'd have revival and she'd be burdened, go to the altar and try to get her saved. She's already saved, but she's burdened for the lost. She's burdened for earthquakes. She's burdened for mission fields. Mission fields. I don't know how many burdens she did. In 11 years, before I found her, for mission fields. And they tried to get her saved. They didn't know that it was a burden. It was a revelation. She was lonely. Her heart was crying. And God helped us to find her. A lamb way out there in a lonely place. And Jesus would help me by the Holy Spirit. So great, Brother Helm. Because today I wanted to praise God that the great glory and how he worked with you 24 and a half years ago. 
December 8th, 1964. Oh, that was the day. The glory is great this morning. And it was great then. Oh, yes. But the wonder of it all. It's so great this morning. I'm so thankful for what he's done and, and how he's changed. Joe and our, I, our lives were completely changed. The direction of our life would have been totally different had we not met you. And it's just, it's so dear. I can't express in words. Dear to thee, Jesus but I just this. wanted to praise him today. And we love you so much. Yes, Thank God, God for so you, the work that he's done in our lives through your ministry. So just grateful for that. So thankful. We're grateful for that, Betty. That was the day that Joseph was saved, 8th day of December, 1964. Been in the church for 22 years, trying to find his way to the cross. Been at the altar many times. Been in a lot of youth camps. His folk entertained the greatest preachers in the country and in the world. And he was out in the place, and the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, reached out and brought him in. Like, yes, Thomas. Yesterday, I was working in the uh, office of selling a phone system, and I had Melody Joy bring me a tape from Waiting Upon God. I said, it doesn't matter which one. And it was the same tape that you were reviewing about Joe and Betty and how you was able to pray for Betty and how God had changed Joe. And it helped me so much, and now we're reviewing it this morning. It was real encouraging, so I'm thankful. And I'm also thankful for how God's been helping and blessing and answering prayer. Praise the Lord, Thomas. Isn't that marvelous that you would be right there and God would bring us right to there again? <laughs> praise his name. Yes, Kathy. Uh, Brother Helm, I just want to praise the Lord for being here today. And uh, may I just praise the Lord for your newsletters because uh, I realize I haven't seen you for a year. Yes. And I don't think I've heard your voice. But it's like I've been with you when, um, you know, you send the, the letters to us. Yes. And I'm uh, thankful that you'll send prayer requests to our church. Yes. And uh, because the main people who give me prayer requests are Dave and the children. And then to get a prayer request from you, it's just so special. It's, it's just like I'm, I've been with you, and I just want to praise the Lord. And yes. I want to claim healing. I believe Jesus touched me when you prayed for healing. Thankful, praise Jesus, for this. We give thee the praise, our Heavenly Father, for this precious help to this daughter. Thank you, Jesus. She signs every letter. It's really remarkable. Yes, Lois, it's so good to see you. Oh, it's so good to be with you. I just don't want to fail to pray Jesus, uh, praise Jesus for how he's helped Karen and I on the phone. It seems like um, if anything came out of Alabama, it was Karen six for me. And I uh, just want to praise Jesus for how he helps us on the phone. Uh, sometimes I don't know what I'm burdened about or the things that are on my heart. Yes. But somehow God gets Karen to those places and it really helps me. And I'm so thankful yes. that she's just a half an hour away in the phone line so we can get a hold of one another. And I'm thankful for the newsletters, how they encourage me. I'm so homesick to be with you sometimes. And um, the newsletters were so, the last one was so wonderful. It just thrilled my heart so much. I'm thankful for that. So I thankful. look for them in the mail. And um, I'm just thankful. Thankful for this ministry. Thankful for the truth. Thankful for how God's helping my son, Michael, at White yes, Harvest. Yes, yes. So good. thankful about that. <clears throat> and, so uh, grateful for that. So thankful. I want to praise the Lord today for his faithfulness. Yes. We have lost because we found Paul and Glida Abraham. That's, uh, that's why Karen has you and you have Karen. When we found the Abrahams 50 years ago. That's why we have her. Because when Richard, the older brother of Roderick, when he was about three, three and a half to four, I'd lay my hand on his head and say, here's our preacher boy. And that's where we found her. He was her pastor when we found her years ago in Noblesville. So all you get all these wonderful things of God's guidance together. It's so marvelous how he's directed. It goes back to 50 years this year. <clears throat> that's why we have found her. We want to thank Jesus for helping Karen and Lois and encouraging them together because they wouldn't have one another and meant for that direction. That's so true, Brother Hellman. There's so many times I feel like I have no one, no one but Karen. And um, I know when I was a girl, I know I must have been 13 or 14, and there in Hagerstown where I was born and raised, 
I'd stand at my bedroom window and I'd say, Lord, I know you're calling me to something. What is it? I thought I was to be called as a missionary. I didn't know, but um, there I was, just a few short miles from Parker. And in my heart, I was asking the Lord at that time, what, what was I called to? So I'm so thankful for this ministry and, and the help and the hope and the wonder for the world and I'm trusting for your trip to Israel that the Lord will yes, guide you. Yes, thank you. Called to follow Jesus, to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. To love one another. To love as he loves. And we can't do that in ourselves because it must be by the Holy Spirit, Jesus indwelling, that we love our enemies and we love our neighbors as ourselves. And this great calling is to follow and to be obedient as to each one that will hear and heed. Praise his precious name, saith my soul. Precious daughters. Isn't it wonderful to have this wonderful family with us? And if John and Jen hadn't been willing to give up being a supervisor in nationwide insurance, teaching supervisors how to sell, coming down to the lowlands of Macedonia to help us, 14 years is October since you came. Lydia was not born yet. And here she is. John's working. Can't be with us. We miss him. So glad that you could be with us this morning. And thankful for Lydia and Naomi having a victorious time with the young people. Thank you.
Beautiful. Praise the Lord. That song sure fit in here, didn't it? So grateful. Thankful for Jesus to give us this great song. It's a, is it in the Methodist hymn book? 367. It's one of the great, great hymns. Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be free. <laughs> That's what Georgine was talking about. Force me to render up my sword, and I shall conquer me. I sink in life's alarms when by myself I stand. There's self denial again. Imprisoned me within thine arms, and strong shall be my hand. My heart is weak and poor until it master find. It has no spring of action sure. It varies with the mind or with the wind. It cannot freely move till thou hast wrought its chain. Enslave it with thy matchless love and deathless it shall reign. Oh, is this great? My power is faint and low till I have learned to serve. That's in following by inner denial. It wants the needed fire to glow. It wants the breeze to nerve. It cannot drive the world until itself be driven. Its flag can only be unfurled when thou shalt breathe from heaven. And we just sung this is like heaven to me. <laughs> you see, the very things that this hymn is covering in this service in two hours. You just said we can't love unless the Holy Spirit does. That's right, I just said that. Here it is. We cannot love our neighbor or one another except the Holy Spirit Jesus within us love. Yes, sir. My will is not my own till thou hast made it thine. In other words, resigning, leaving all, forsaking all, giving all, and then we're willing then in this death to let his will have preeminence. And so there must be an inner death in order to experience this. If it would reach a monarch's throne, it must its crown resign. There it is. Inner death again. Inner denial again. Here is serving. Here is finding. Here is recipient of great blessing. It only stands unbent amid the clashing strife. That's the death. That's the battle. The struggle. The pressing. The upheaval. When on thy bosom it has lent and found in thee its life. We read that in an upper room several weeks ago. How great it is to have the Holy Spirit. See, I've never seen, I've never, uh, my wife and I went through the, this Methodist hymn in 1942. We went through the hymn. We would sing, she'd play and we'd sing it. So I've been in this hymn since maybe back in 42 or 3. It's so great uh, concerning its truth and its marvel. And we thank God for this revelation. Isn't it great? It's not easy to sing, but it's good to hear. God helps you to sing it well. You know, it's, it's a difficult number. The ordinary people don't sing it without quite a bit of gifts and helps. So it was very well done. We appreciate it. And the truth of it is so wonderful, isn't it? We praise him for it. Praise the Lord. Thank you for singing. Everyone be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Everyone be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Yes, Kim. One thing that um, I am seeing here this morning with the testimonies and all that's working is that God will go to great lengths to make connections. The years ago in the 40s, he was making the connection 
to get Georgine in in the 70s and 80s. Right. And, and he'll go to great lengths, but then after the connection's made, it's up to us to take the responsibility to read the book, to pray, to do what he wants to happen, why he made that connection. And it can all be wasted. It can yes. all be lost if, if we just don't respond. True. And I trust that in what I've seen here today, that I will be faithful when God's working in whatever way, that I will pick up the connection and do what I have to do. Do that's my right. part that's right. to make it work. Yes. Oh, that's a good evaluation, presentation of, of how we're called to follow and to continue carrying our corner, being obedient to Jesus. And as Jesus went out of the temple, recorded in the 13th chapter of St. Mark, as Jesus went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering uh, and said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be one left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now he's sharing with them here that what seems to be so stable and so secure and so long standing won't always be. He said what you see here won't always stand the test of the storm. The time will come when the stones will all be thrown down and they'll come apart. There shall not be one left one stone upon another. That is, what comes, he has a part, and he was speaking concerning his return and coming back again, which may be very soon. For well, the first time Jesus revealed to me that his coming was soon was in October of 1942. And as Jesus sat there upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled. He's speaking concerning things that come to pass before his return. The angels there they were. Why stand ye men here of Galilee gazing up into heaven? For this same Jesus shall come again, even as you see him go in like manner. And Jesus is speaking to them in this chapter concerning the return of Jesus and the things that take place before that coming, the great return of Jesus the Christ. So he said there will be a lot of deception in the world and there will be rumors of wars before his return, many wars, but he said don't be troubled for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nations shall rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in many places. Now he tells us here that there is divisions in the nations. We've never had so much trouble of nations as we've had the last 20 to 30 to 50 years on earth. Because before I was born, we didn't have a radio. I remember when radios came in and we were so fascinated with them. Telephones came in a while before I was born. You know, we ought to be awfully thankful for Mr. Bell that was able to find the telephone as Jewel and Florence and I was talking about what the telephone means that we can communicate because back when this was given, why, if they had a war, it would take a hundred years sometimes to get it clear on the other side of the earth that it ever occurred. Yes. 
didn't have any way to communicate. They didn't have any way to get only by donkey or by horse or by sailing. And in those days, it took a long while to sail halfway around the world. When Kathleen and Karen and Janice's grandfather, James Lee's grandfather, went to Florida from Indiana in 1917, it took him two weeks to get there. And they had to pull his hubmobile across streams by team of horses. Wasn't any way to get the message of all these things that were going to take place at that time out. But now, you see, we have, we have the message, what's going on around the world in seconds. When you hear, when you shall hear of wars. When you shall hear these events. You see, the, tele, the telephone and the radio and television. When you shall hear. When you shall hear of wars. When you shall see, hear of all these different things. So you see the telephone and the radio and television has to do with hearing and getting it out. He said, and when ye shall hear, he didn't say when ye shall read. He's talking about his return. And these instruments of hearing are in this generation, in this century. In the previous centuries, it took a long while to hear. Because they didn't have radios and televisions. Are you with me? Yes. It's significant here. And when you shall hear yes. in this age of which he returns, these stones are going to be thrown down. But when they come down, remember, you're going to be hearing. You're going to have instruments of hearing. Of yes. wars. And you're going to hear about nations in trouble, in conflict. There's been more conflict in nations in the last few decades than in previous times because of the upheaval, which is an aftermath of not doing God's will, of failing to hear the voice of Jesus. See, nations are in trouble because they haven't heard the voice is still the Sea of Galilee. The nations are in trouble because they have not heard the voice of God calling. They have not heard that He can guide them by His Holy Spirit. The reason homes are divided and divorced is because they have not the Holy Spirit in preeminence to guide us. Because where He guides, there is harmony. He can take two carnal people and if they'll die out to self yes. and to their desires, he can make them one. Yes. And you see, our world is filled with divided people and divided homes because they have not yet heard the voice. And homes that every child that's in a divorced home is scarred yes. with wounds. Yes. Even though they're forgiven, they cannot erase them because hearing his voice to follow would have kept the home safe in one. And he's the only one who could do it. We can't do it. But all over the United States, there's tremendous war within the homes of battles and struggles because of attitudes, because of carnality because of our own wants, because of our own desires. And if we'll hear his voice, he's able to heal us. Yes. That touched me. Yes. Because we all need it. Yes. We all do. Yes. So we need to be encouraged this morning. Somebody has back troubles right there. Behold, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Somebody had back trouble right there. It's in the bone muscle cartilage tissue. The fibers. He just then told me. Amen. Coming up from the background. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We are in trouble because the background has been such that we would not hear. Yes. We would not hear what he had to say. Yes. And when we hear what he has to say, yes. then he comes with healing in his wings. Yes. And he heals the home. Yes. He heals the nation. Yes. 
because he's the great physician now is nigh the sympathizing Jesus. So when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the darkness flees away and we come at morning while the song spirit sings to us in his holy promises of love and care. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in many places. I think there is a record that tells us that there have been more earthquakes the last 25 years, say the last 20 years, than in previous many years. I don't know how many earthquakes there are on the earth almost continually, somewhere. To imagine that so many miles down in the center of this earth there's such an upheaval of fire, combustion, and power. And so many parts of the earth is suffering because of this tremendous power that's locked up in the center of it, burning. He said there are going to be many earthquakes. That earthquake that came in Alaska, you know, that God told me about in 1963, wasn't it? When it was such a calamity and the Lord burdened me so severely about it. For hours I had to plead and pray and cry because this terrible thing coming in the earth was so ferocious that unless God intervened, there'd be thousands killed because in Alaska it was so great that they said great trees would wave till almost you'd think they were going to touch the ground. It would be such a shake. Now I was in an earthquake right down this street in 1937. That's as much earthquake as I want to be in. Except just a few years ago, I was in my bed, and you were there in West Virginia. And I called you, and I said, I was just in a little earthquake here in my bed. And Florence saw in her bedroom, I was in there shaking the bed, and I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> Down this little street here, uh, the stove began to shake at about midnight in 1937, 52 years ago. He said, there's going to be many earthquakes, but that one in Alaska was so tremendous. And when we were in Alaska last August, they showed us how the ground had changed 10 feet there on that plateau. Of all the fierce and ferocious things that came out because of that tremendous earthquake, and there were thousands of people that could have been killed, and only a few hundred lost their lives because God intervened. Because people were praying here for God to intervene. And I prayed, and the Lord revealed to me there were seven on earth that he was trying to get the message to, to pray that they might be spared. He said there are going to be many earthquakes just before his return. Yes. Nations rising up against nations. Families, you see, having trials and troubles. Yes. And rebellion in the hearts of people. Yes. Of young men and women. Rebellion. Yes. It's, it's within the home and within the nation and within the earth. Yes. And within the soul of a great conflict. And only Christ can still yes. that storm as he comes in and blots out our transgressions. Yes and saves us that we might come in his likeness. And he said, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in many places, and there shall be famines and troubles. And you see, God just spared us the last few years from famines here in this country. Because two or three years ago, there were 29 nations in famine. They didn't have hardly anything to eat. They were starving. If you knew the background of the grain, the need of grain in Mexico. It's a tremendous thing what's going on in these nations. We're blessed because there's been prayer made. God has heard prayer and spared us and given us help from on high that this nation has been spared from many, many calamities in these areas of the famines that he has kept us from. In Russia, they have to stand in line for hours to get a little bit of groceries and they may not get them. <clears throat> Many nations, they're, they're starved because of famine in many places, not just in one nation, but in various parts of Africa, South America, and Asia, the Far East. And God has blessed this country because our forefathers came to seek his face that they might worship him as the Holy Spirit would dictate and lead. And that touches, that touched my heart then. 
our forefathers came to hear his voice, to see what he wanted, not to see what we wanted. And that's what we must have in the church, in the episcopacy, the papacy, is to hear his voice. Because outside of there, there is upheaval, and there's disappointment, and there is sorrow, and there is hurt and crushing and wounds that cannot be healed only by the Prince of Peace. Jesus the Christ, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Jesus, on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in this life we can be healed and live abounding in him as we trust and as we deny self and as we're crucified of the carnal nature, filled with the Holy Spirit, that we may become one. As we preached a year ago tomorrow night in Cincinnati, that they may be one as we are one. That's been the prayer of God, the prayer of Jesus for these hundreds of years, that the church may become one as God and Jesus are one, that the world may believe. Amen. And so therefore, outside of Christ, there is not only calamity, but there is disappointment and hurt and wounds. But in Christ, then he has the power to deliver even in the midst of earthquakes and famines. So he's delivered in the midst of earthquakes and famines, even though there have been many. He said, uh, these are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to the councils, and in the synagogue shall you be beaten. You shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake and for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Now, when he uh, spoke this, uh, they didn't have many presses, printing press then. They had to do it by hand. But now we have presses. Uh, it's tremendous what a press will do now. And he tells that the gospel must be published to all nations. And it can go by television and by radio. It can cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So now the gospel is in all nations. It's in the air. If you have the right instrument, you can get tuned into it. In any of the nations. There's great power that can be set out. And now this gospel has gone to the nations. And is going. And when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour. That speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter are one. That's the third person of the Trinity. God the Father, Jehovah, is on the throne, and at his right hand is Jesus Christ. His beloved, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered among men, was crucified, arose from the dead, and ascended from the Mount of Olives. I shall never forget, Richard was with me, and Joyce was with me, and my wife was with me, and we were seated there in that hill on the 20th floor, and suddenly I had a vision and saw Jesus ascending from the Mount of Olives. And I saw him all wrapped in a beautiful light. And I said, oh, Jesus, please help me to hold that in my soul, in my mind, in my heart, because the Holy Ghost alone can give you this in your heart, in your soul. But you may keep it, and we keep it only as we follow. Yes. Only as we follow is it kept. When we cease to follow, and the spiritual law of following is hearing and obeying. Obedience will only be experienced by the soul that denies self and takes the cross. So as we follow, he's able to deliver us from the upheavals of sin and darkness, iniquity, that we might be in quiet and peace in the home and in the nation and in the church and in the soul of the persons therein. He says here that the Holy Ghost will speak through you what's needed. You've heard me tell, I went into a church basement of a large church, Methodist church, and they said, we want to ask you some questions. And I didn't know what, I was kind of, I shouldn't say frightened, but I don't know what the term is, because I didn't know how to answer their questions. 
They were scholars. They were church people. And for anybody to ask me a question when I know so little and so limited, it, it, you're, in a, you're in a spot and in a place. And here I went in and they said, we want to ask you some questions. So I started praying. And I prayed because I didn't know what else to do. I, I pressed to pray. And I got to praying and the prayer didn't last five minutes or ten. It went longer. And while I was praying, the Holy Spirit helped me so wonderfully as he helped sister praying here two hours ago. And so when I stopped, I said, what are your questions? I'm not sure I can answer any of them because I'm so feeble and limited. I have very little knowledge. And I'm not sure I know the answers to your questions. And they just sat there and stared at me. Not one person spoke. They just looked at me. I said, what are your questions? I don't know how to answer them, but I'd like to hear what they are. And no, they didn't say anything. They just said, they all looked at me. The pastor looked at me. His wife looked at me. And the leaders looked at me. I said, what are your questions? You brought me here and you said you want me to come to answer your questions. And I don't know how to answer them. But what are they? And they finally said, our questions were all answered while you prayed. The Holy Ghost, you see, knew their questions. So he answered them while we were trying to find out how to pray. He said, the Holy Ghost will give you in the time of your need. Yes, yes. Yes, right what you have need of, the Holy Spirit will give that to you yes. when you need it. Yes. I was with Richard, and we were uh, in a foreign land, just he and myself. No one else there, and we reviewed this a few days ago. And my wife had gone with Oliver and the group to the grave of a great saint, one of the great saints and missionaries in Africa. And while they were visiting the grave of this great saint, by the way, you and I visited that grave, yes, and while I was there, the power of God came upon me. There was weeds. There was weeds in the graveyard. But I could, I tell you this, the power of God came down and witnessed to me about that saint of God, right. so great, so strong. I never had much greater witness in any graveyard than I did there in Nigeria. Oh, the Holy Spirit came down and helped us. Well, while you were going back to the grave with the group to see, God came on me and I began to preach to this brother right here. And I, the Holy Ghost came to me and preached to him a sermon I wish it could have been recorded because it never came to me before. And never has come again. It was beyond man. It was beyond anyone to ever give. It was so marvelous that you were, you thought it was, I don't know, Richard, what did you think? I know. You were amazed. A message for the nations. Yes. It was. It was so great that we couldn't tell what it was. But it left me right away. Instantly. In seconds it was gone. That's right. The Holy Spirit came and gave us such a time together. So the Holy Spirit knows what to give and to present in your heart, in your life, to your friend, to your neighbor, and to your loved one. I was with Claude Bartlett and I was talking to him and I said, I have the, friend, I have the leading that you should retire today and go home and lie down. Holy Ghost came upon me. I said, go home and lie down. And he, he didn't, so it had his heart attack. See, I didn't realize, but the Holy Spirit spoke through me and told me that he should lie down and rest a while. The Holy Spirit will give you in the hour of testing and trial what you need. Now this speaks as to the trials of the Jews and the Christians. But the Holy Spirit will speak through you what is needed. He's able to do that. And that's what he does. And Jesus is speaking to them about his return and about our nations will be in upheaval and brothers shall be betrayed the brother to death. 
the father and the son, children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. There's a great battle, a great warfare in the earth. And it's terrific. It's tremendous. And we must hold fast to the faith so that we'll do God's will and not our own. That Jesus will have first place. Because Jesus is coming, and we don't know when he's coming. He's, it's been predicted many times. But there isn't anyone that knows when Jesus is coming. No man, no personality will ever know when Jesus is coming. But the signs of his coming are apparent and an evident. The only one that knows when Jesus is coming is the Father himself. The angels do not know. The Son of Man does not know. But we want to be ready because the Holy Spirit can lead us and guide us and keep us from a lot of pitfalls if only we'll follow and be obedient and let him change lives. Young people, you can have all the wealth and all fame, but it won't satisfy. You have the greatest and most beautiful things, but you'll be unhappy. But if you'll do what Jesus wants you to do, you may be penniless and you feel like you're in a palace. You may be penniless and you may not have anything, but you feel like you own everything. But the earth is in a great test and trial and struggle and Jesus is coming and we don't know just when that is. But he said there's going to be great heartache. When ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not. Let him that readeth understand, let him them be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter in therein. To take anything out of his house and let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord hath shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there. Believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders, seduce, if it were possible, even the very elect. But take ye heed. Behold, I have told you before. In those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall you see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He said, then ye shall see. Well, now if Jesus is here and uh, uh, thousands of miles from here, the earth hides him here. But he said, ye shall see. So in that day, all are going to behold him. It's a mystery. It's a marvel. He said, ye shall see him. Isn't that great? Oh, I think it's, it's something. Then shall ye, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power. That's speaking to the people on earth. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the utmost parts of the earth to the utmost parts of heaven. He said, learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know ye that it is nigh, even at the doors. And so the fig tree began to bud in 1948. All Bible scholars know that the fig tree began to bud in May of 1948, when Israel became a nation after hundreds of years of wandering over the world. The fig tree budded and it's now coming more and more to fruition. Yes. Yes. And here when we go back to Israel, we go back for one purpose and that is to love them and to do God's will. Amen. To let Jesus lead that he may be seen and not us. So many go to Israel and they press them to be saved. 
They say, you need to be saved right now. Well, that's true. But they, they said, we're fed, up and we're fed up with that over our heads. And so we know that what will really bring them to Christ is his love of the work of the Holy Spirit in a body that will obey him and not press them. See, we're not to press them. We're to love them and let the Holy Spirit woo them and bring them to the realization that Jesus is Christ, that he's already come. They're still looking for him. They don't think he's come yet. But he came as a babe in Bethlehem's manger. And he's coming again. All eyes shall behold him. <clears throat> when we go to Israel, we go to love the people. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit love through you and through my heart that he may be seen and known. And God works there. God leads there. And Jesus is coming and we want to be ready when he comes. <laughs> So the fig tree began to bud many years ago. So in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know ye that it is not even at the door. That means the coming of Jesus is very near to us. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled or come to pass. He said this generation, that's what my professor said to me at Earlham College. He was a PhD out of Harvard. And he said, he said, Jesus didn't come back. He said, this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. He said, you see, Jesus didn't come back because he didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. He believed that Jesus was like Socrates and Plato. He's a man just like other men. He was a great teacher, a great prophet, but was not truly the Son of God. Didn't believe it. He said, these things... Which Jesus said, he said, this generation shall not pass until he returns. I said to him, he didn't mean the generation that lived at that time. He meant the generation that lived when these things come to pass, when ye shall hear. That's television, that's radio, and that's the telephone. When ye shall hear. He said, these things shall not come to pass. Well, he said there, he didn't come then. I said, he wasn't referring to that generation. He was referring to the generation that lived when these things come to pass in the scripture. Amen. When ye shall hear. Right. No one knows the day or the hour. But here we have the message that he's coming and we need to get ready. And isn't this something? Well, my professor said to the whole class, he was a Greek and Hebrew scholar, he said he didn't come back in that generation. I said he didn't mean that generation then. He meant the generation that lived when these signs come to pass, when they're in evidence. You see, the, these instruments of hearing only came in my lifetime. They didn't have telephones way back there. They didn't have televisions and radios. Praise the Lord for his mercy to help us. He said, this generation shall not pass away. He meant the generation that lived at the time of his coming when these things are in evidence. And heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He said, the heavens and the earth will pass, but what I tell you is going to remain. What I give you will stay and stand forever. The words of Jesus will not pass away. His promises will not fail. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star, the everlasting Father, the counsel of the mighty one of Israel. What he says will be, for he is the second person of the Trinity. The comforter is the third person. He is here to guide us into all truth. To help us to hear. We have the telephone and the television to hear. But he wants the Holy Spirit come to hear in our heart. Not in the ear, but the inner ear of the heart. You see, you hear the, the radio, but he wants to the Holy Spirit for us to hear his voice inside. To get ready, to get prepared. For today is the day of salvation. This is the accepted time. Don't put it off any longer. Seek the Lord while you have breath. Seek him and repent of all sins and seek him with all your heart. 
lest we perish, that he might have the full preeminence within us. Because the coming of Jesus is at hand. And we're living in that generation of marvelous things. No one knows when he's coming. No one can predict that. And whatever would, one would predict, why we would be reflecting the fact that we really do not know this scripture. But of that day and that hour knows no man. <clears throat> no man know. Not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. That's verse 32. Take ye heed, watch and pray. That's the waiting upon God. That's letting God lead us. Watch and pray. Now when you're waiting, you're watching. What are you looking at? You're looking up. When you're watching, you don't watch on the run. You watch while you're still. Because if you're wrong, you can't see what you watch. If you movement in your will, then we cannot see what is the destiny for us at the moment. And the will of God is to follow Jesus and to love one another and to fulfill the word that he has spoken in the heart of those, his followers, that's willing to become like him. So he said, take heed and watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. That is, when Jesus is coming. No one knows when he's coming, but he said, watch. And now, whenever you're on the watch, you're going to know when you see him. Because he said, all are going to behold him. He's going to return the second time without sin to those that look for him. To as many as look for him shall he appear the second time. And he's coming again. And we need to look up, but we need to watch. Let's wait upon God. Let's keep our eyes upon the scriptures. Keep our eyes upon him and our heart tuned by the Holy Spirit. So when he says stop, we stop. When he says go, we go. Just like when I was on the telephone two or three days ago with Linda. And I was telling her how thankful I was that she and her husband could be with Janice and Michael. And I started to say goodbye. And the Holy Spirit said, no, it's not time to quit yet. And I said, Jesus, what is it? And he told me about her father. And told me about your father. The Holy Spirit, you see, when I was trying to end the uh, conversation, was telling me about Linda's father and certain situations that's coming within three areas. One of them in is the most. And we were so thankful that God would love her father so much to help us to know in advance so he could be prayed for and encouraged. Then he told me about Norman Reinhardt, that he needs encouragement and love and lifting and blessing. He said, I, I want to, I'll bless him. So he told me about both of their fathers in certain areas of the body and the mind and the soul. It's what God's grace will ever hear. And we only hear, we're to hear as the Holy Spirit leads, that he may have all the praise and the glory and the honor. Because there I was sitting there with Gilbert Meredith and his wife and daughter, and Jesus came upon me and told me of a growth in his brain. This is back about 25, 30 years ago. I began to pray to God that the Lord would come and take the growth out of Gilbert's head and brain, and he did it. Thank you, Jesus. He did it. 